Hey guys, it's Josh from Active Tours and today we're exploring one of my favorite cities, Santa Barbara. Santa Barbara is sometimes referred to as the American Riviera because of its beautiful beaches, majestic mountains, and colorful culture. If you like this video, please subscribe to become a founding member of this channel. I do try to respond to all the comments as well. Let's get started. Number 1. The Old Mission Santa Barbara Explore one of Santa Barbara's most picturesque landscapes. Known as the Queen of Missions for its exceptional beauty, the Santa Barbara Mission was founded by the Spanish Franciscans in 1786 and was the 10th of 21 missions. The church was destroyed in the 1925 earthquake. However, restorations have returned it to its original grandeur. With its grand twin bells on the hilltop overlooking the city, the ocean and the Santa Ynez Mountains is the number one stop for me. The mission is open daily for self-guided tours and the locals that I chatted with say they enjoy picnicking in the Rose Garden at sunset, something that I'll have to make time for on my next visit to Santa Barbara. Number 2. Wine Tasting Santa Barbara wine country is quite literally sideways, uniquely situated in the valley between the San Ynez mountain range and the San Rafael mountain range, funneling cool Pacific air and marine layer over the vines. It makes for a great day trip from Santa Barbara, but if you can't make it up to San Ynez, the Santa Barbara Urban Wine Trail is a great option as you can walk from tasting room to tasting room, with tastings from $10 to $25. Some of my favorite wineries are The Valley Project, La Fond Winery, and Santa Barbara Wines. The guys at The Valley Project said don't sleep on the Santa Barbara Merlot, even if it reminds Paul Giamatti's character in Sideways of his ex-wife. Let me know what your favorite wineries are. Number 3. Kayaking If you're like me, you're physically drawn to the water and mountains. The Santa Barbara's coastline has it all. I hopped on a coastal kayaking tour with the Santa Barbara Adventure Company and we spent four hours exploring the coast. We learned that kelp can grow up to two feet in a day, which is just mind-blowing. Our guide Addison pointed out a harbor seal and a bat ray swimming in the seagrass close to us. I failed to photograph both of those, but I promise I saw them. Always be filming. You can also see dolphins, and depending on the time of the year, you can see California gray whales, blue whales, minke whales, and humpback whales. We stopped at a beach for a break and explore with the tide washed up. All in all, it was a great trip, and I highly recommend it. Number 4. The Funk Zone The Funk Zone is a favorite of mine, and one that I seem to visit on every Santa Barbara trip. Cornered by the Ocean, the 101, and the Amtrak Station, this district has boutique tasting rooms, cafes, galleries, breweries, and shops. Its old manufacturing and functional buildings from decades past gave way to the nickname The Funk Zone. This area has a lot of character and is super walkable, and one that I always love to go to. Some of my favorite stops in The Funk Zone are Metropolis, The Lark, Llama Dog, Area 51, and Dark Coffee Company. Dark Coffee Company has a cool garden that you can hang out in. Uh, it's really fun to check out. Number 5. Cycling Santa Barbara is full of bike paths, and since parking can be a little tricky in the more popular areas, cycling is your best bet. The most popular bike path in Santa Barbara is Cabrillo Bike Path, which runs from Ledbetter Beach to Butterfly Beach at approximately 4.5 miles long, paved and flat. This is great for families. You can rent out these quad bikes, and you can even hit up a few mountain passes if you're into road biking. Number 6, Stearns Wharf. Stearns Wharf is the oldest working wharf in California and was built in 1872 by John Peck Stearns. When completed in 1872, it became the longest and deepest water pier between Los Angeles and San Francisco. You can drive on the wharf and parking is free for the first 90 minutes. It has a good mix of shops and restaurants. The ice cream shop at the end is a must stop for me on those hot summer days. There's tons of people out fishing on this wharf and you can even go scuba diving, um, something that I definitely want to do uh, with these guys next time I got their number. Number 7, the Superior Court. The Santa Barbara County Courthouse on Anacapi Street in downtown Santa Barbara is a work of art. Although it was closed due to COVID, there's a free scenic lookout at the top of the clock tower offering 360 degree views of the city, the Santa Ynez Mountains, and the Pacific Ocean. The clock tower can be reached by elevator or if you want to exercise, there's a staircase. 
The beautiful gardens and the building backdrop make for a great place to elope if you ask me. The Santa Barbara Courthouse is open daily and includes free drop-in tours hosted by the Santa Barbara County Courthouse staff. Number eight, inspiration point. When I visit a city, I like to get a good bird's eye view of my surroundings. Inspiration point more than does the trick. This 3.5 mile round trip hike takes you up to a panoramic 360 degree view of the city, ocean, and the Santa Ynez Mountains. I recommend hiking up at sunset to get those beautiful pink hues. It also gives you a little directional perspective with the sun setting in the west. You realize that the Santa Barbara beachfront faces south. Number 9. Stand-up paddleboarding. Did I mention that I love water? You can rent stand-up paddleboards and kayaks right next to Stern's Wharf or in the marina. You're going to want to drag your feet a little bit as you're getting into the water. Sometimes there are rays that hang out close to shore. Once you're on the board, you can cruise around the wharf. It's fun to cruise in and out of the wharf pillars. If you go to the left side of the wharf, you can stay out of the boat wake. And sometimes you can see harbor seals hanging around the pier, but they're pretty skittish. Number 10, the Museum of Natural History. Uniquely nestled in nature, the museum is located along Mission Creek in the Mission Canyon area. The museum has 10 outdoor exhibits focusing on regional history, including astronomy, birds, insects, geology, mammals, marine life, paleontology, plant life, and the Chumash Indians. The skeleton of a 72-foot blue whale is amazing to explore. This whale was hit by a cargo ship, representing an additional cost to those imported goods. There's also a natural history sea center on the wharf, Number 11, Red Rock Pools. In the winter and the spring, the water of the Santa Ynez River flows west to Lake Kachuma. It crisscrosses the road that leads you back to Red Rock Pools. My friend Graciela showed me this gem of a location and we took our bikes from the day use area back to the pools. This area is part of the Los Padres National Forest and is extra special to me. And if you want to support this forest that stretches along the California coast from Ventura to Monterey, head over to Los Padres Forest Watch or lpfw.org. Number 12, Arroyo Beach. Arroyo Borough Beach, also known as Hendry's Beach by locals and residents, is a popular location for people to walk their dogs off leash. So if you're bringing your four-legged friend to Santa Barbara, you probably already know about this location. When I bring my dog Iris on a trip, the first thing I do is Google dog-friendly parks. We explored the beach and found these cool trees that fell down cliffs. Just be sure to pick up after your pet. Number 13, Shoreline Park. Shoreline Park is a beautiful space overlooking the ocean with a large grassy area. There are tables to sit and have lunch and stairs to walk down to the beach. You can go down one set of stairs and walk on the beach a while and then walk up another set of stairs on the other end of the park. This area is great for a morning run or watching the surfers at Ledbetter Beach. Number 14, the Chumash Painted Cave State Historic Park. This park is a short 20-minute drive out of Santa Barbara. The walls of the small cave are carved from towering sandstone boulders that contain some of the finest remaining rock art created by the Chumash Native Americans. A steep path leads you to the cave entrance, which is protected by heavy iron grillwork. The anthropologists estimate that the paintings date to the early 1600s and earlier. It's important to remember that we displace these people and pay them some respect. Number 15, the Morton Bay Fig Tree. Right next to the Santa Barbara Rail Station and the 101 Freeway, this enormous tree is said to be the largest of its kind in the United States. I went to visit this tree early in the morning to get the sunlight to stream through the tree sideways. Has anyone taken the train to Santa Barbara? I've always wanted to do that or take a long train ride. Let me know in the comments below. Number 16, the Santa Barbara Botanical Garden. The Santa Barbara Botanical Garden is a 78-acre botanical garden containing a thousand species of rare and indigenous plants. I explored the area in the summer, but to fully live up to its potential, you want to visit in the spring. Learning about these invasive plants that crowd out the indigenous plants was fascinating. It makes me think twice of taking pictures of those beautiful blankets of yellow flowers in the spring. 
I hope you enjoyed this Santa Barbara travel guide. Thanks in advance for becoming a founding member of my channel, Active Tours. I'll be finishing up a tour review of the Coastal Kayaking Tour in my next video. That'll come out in a few days. And after that, I'll be sharing a recent backpacking trip to Duck Pass Trail. That was an amazing trip. I can't wait to show you guys all about it. Um, after that, I'm still looking for places to go. So comment below. Let me know where you think I should go. Um, I'd love to do another travel video. Maybe it'll be in your town. Perhaps it'll be in a destination that you want to go to.